Okay. <laughs> you know, it's kind of weird. I always say good morning. Now it's two o'clock in the afternoon, so I can't say good morning, but I might. It's like when I walk into school and it's like three o'clock in the afternoon and I see somebody I'm, and I've just gotten there. I'm like, hey, good morning. And it's like, whoa, wait a second. It's afternoon. All right, kids. Hey, my name is Mr. Krause. All of the materials found on this can be found at nkinfinity.com. I don't say it a lot, but I'd like you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Okay, please hit the subscribe button. What you're going to find out as the year goes on, I'm constantly putting out awesome information for that Algebra 2 Common Core test. Near the end of the year, we're going to have so much review and so much information that's going to be very, very useful to you. You don't want to miss out on it. So make sure that you hit the subscribe button to the YouTube channel. You could also like the video as well, leave a comment, whatever, I don't care. It doesn't matter to me. So today we're going to be doing complete the square. So if you've got algebra tiles, um, you can use them for one uh, for this, or you can uh, navigate to this website. But here's what we're going to do. We're going to complete uh, the quadratic expression given the form of x squared. We're going to we're going to fill in and make a square using algebra tiles. Now, every x square like this represents a tile that's um, area is x by x. And every tile that represents this is going to be 1 by x, or area equals x. And this is just 1 by 1. And we're going to make squares. Now, today is about completing the square. So if I were to give you this, and you had to fill this in, you would have to fill this in using nine squares. So if you have your algebra tiles, you'd use nine. And I would put nine here. And then if I wanted to factor this thing, if this length is x, and this is one and one and one, this side is x plus three. And this side would be x plus 3 as well. So the factoring of this would be x plus 3 times x plus 3. Or x plus 3 squared. This is a perfect square trinomial. So let's play with it a little bit. I think I got it up somewhere. Oh, that ain't it. Where'd it go? Oh, there we go. Algebra tiles. So you just click on algebra tiles. And let's say, let's make these things as big as I can. Why can I do this? All right, let's bring, let's just bring one out. All right, I'm not. For some reason, this isn't working. Let's try refresh. Algebra tiles. It was working just a few minutes ago. There we go. Make them bigger. All right, so as big as possible. All right, so there's x squared. And let's say I just had 2x. Now, to get them to turn, you just turn like this. Let's say I had, so right now, what's sitting there is, um, I can't write on that. Hmm. Let's see if I can do this. This and let me get a piece of paper. Let me get a little white white space. Ah, there we go. So what I have here is x squared plus two x. Now I want to know what you have to add in order to complete the square. What well, what would I have to add? Well, I'd have to add one of these single units, and that would put complete the square. And what would that length be? Well, this would be, this length right here on this left side would be x plus 1. And the length on the top would be x plus 1. So it would be x plus 1 times x plus 1, or x plus 1 squared. So if I come back over to here, and if I had x squared plus 2x plus 1, I would need to add one of these tiles and factored, in factored, I want you to write it as x plus 1 squared. So hit the pause button real quick. I'm going to do so too. Hit the pause button real quick and 
try these on your own. Go through these on your own. I want you to do 4x, 6x. Well, we just did 6x. So 4x, 8x, and 10x, and see how you do. All right, hopefully you pause it in your back. So let's just keep going. We're going to add another one here. That's here. And we're going to add another one on the bottom. So that would be 4x now. But now i got to add how many of these things? Now I have to add four of these things. So go back over here. I have to add four of those things. And in factored form, it would be x plus 2 times x plus 2. Or, oh, I should have written that upstairs, x plus 2 squared. All right, 9 we already did. We had to add 9 tiles. And we said that was x plus 3 times x plus 3, or x plus 3 squared. All right, so let's go. We'll just keep going. There's 3. Notice I have to add 9 tiles now, 3 by 3. Brought this. I broke my thing on here to charge, not to listen to. Okay. Um, all right. And then four. Let's do one more. We'll do four. Actually, two more to do. Four. So now it's four. Now I've got eight X's here, but now i got to add how many of these things now? Oh, my gosh. I've got to add tons of them. Oh, I don't know why that's negative one. Oh, there it goes. I don't know how I got that negative one, but uh, let's do that. All right, there we go. Uh, so that would be x plus 4 on this edge, on the top edge, and x plus 4 on the left edge as well. So if I came back over here and I had to add 16 of those blocks, so that's 16. 16 here. See, I'm getting that number. And so it's. I'm just going to write it as x plus 4 squared, because I'm getting tired of writing it twice. And we'll do one more. we got 10 x's. So now we got to add 5 x's on top, 5 x's on the bottom, and we've got to add a bunch more of these stupid things. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, Nine. So now I've got x plus 5 over x plus 5, but I had to add 25 of these blocks. Now you'll notice that each one of these little things is also, you know, a perfect square in that corner. So 25, and this would be x plus 5 squared. So can you calculate the number of single tiles how can you calculate the number of single tiles? Do you see a pattern of where these numbers are? First of all, do you recognize what kind of numbers these are? These are perfect squares. Correct? Perfect squares. How am I getting these numbers? Anybody see it? Anybody at all? All right, I'm going to... Uh... All right, so if you notice, if I take half of this and square it, I get this. Half of 4 is 2, squared is 4. Half of 6 is 3, squared is 9. Half of 8 is 4, squared is 16. Half of five, 10 is 5, 5 squared is 25. So it's half of the middle term squared. What do you notice about the factored version? Well, these are perfect square, but trying, well, the factored form, well, we call the thing, we call these perfect square trinomials. These are perfect square trinomials. Perfect 
square trinomials. But what do you notice about the factored form? It's a bi it is a binomial. It is really just a binomial nomial squared. What is the relationship with the number of one tiles and the factored version? The number of one tiles. Wait. The number, how about this? The number in the factored form or the parentheses is the square root of the number of one tiles. Sorry about my handwriting. I don't know what's going on with me. Anyway, what I want you to remember is we're going to take the B term, whatever the B term is, that's the middle term, take half of it and square it. And that's how you complete the square. All those missing pieces, we had to complete the square, excuse me, by taking half of the middle term. So, We want to find the value of C. What are we going to use for C to make these perfect square trinomials? So we're going to take half of this. So 16 over 2 is 8. 8 squared is 64. So that would make it x plus 16x plus 64. So C is 64. Half of this, 24 divided by 2 is 12. 12 squared is C, which is 144. And finally, this last one, if I take half of this, I get 6. 6 squared is equal to C. So C is equal to 36. That's, that's, the, that's the simple way to use to, to create a perfect square trinomial, and that is our goal, and that's what we're going to do. So let's talk about the rules for solving equations by completing the square. Nothing's complete without Dunkin' Donuts coffee. Huh? Who thought of that? Completing the square, nothing's complete, Dunkin' Donuts coffee. Oh, my gosh. Sometimes I amaze myself. All right. The rules. The simple steps to solve using completing the square. I actually really like completing the square. Doesn't always work. Tomorrow we'll learn something that always works. But this doesn't always work. But for the most part, it works. So we're going to move the C or the constant to the other side, to the right side. Almost always I work on the left and move everything to the right. So I'm going to move the constant over the right side. So 3x squared plus 36x equals negative 42. Get a... I don't know why I just did that. That's tomorrow's. Get a equal to 1 by division. So we need to get a equal to 1. Right now, A is a 3. So what we're going to do is divide. So we're going to divide this side by 3. So we divide everything over here by 3. And we're going to divide this side by 3. And so what I end up with is X squared plus 12X equals negative 14. We are going to Add b over 2 squared to both sides. Now, I, when I write this step right here, this is what I like to do. I know that what I'm going to be doing is completing the square. I'm going to try to figure out what that c value is. So since I know I'm going to be completing the square, I say, hey, we're going to add a square to this side, and it's going to be equal to negative 14 plus square on this side. 
Now, what is that C value, that new C value that's going to go there? Now, if you add something to this side, you have to add it to this side. You got to keep this thing balanced, right? You got to still balance equations. You talked about that when you're way younger. So we're still going to balance these equations. So what am I going to do? I'm going to take half of this and square it. Well, half of 12 is 6. 6 squared is 36. So I'm going to add 36 to both sides. We're going to factor this. Now, the cool thing about this, the factoring is really easy. It's a binomial squared. It's a binomial squared, just like what we did up top. We did these already up top. And what goes in the parentheses is whatever half of this is. So it's plus 6. So x plus 6, this is really x plus 6 times x plus 6, is equal to 22. Now we're almost done. We're almost done solving this. By the way, this was an unfactorable one. What we want to do now is get rid of this square. So we're going to take the square root. Take the square root. And did I put it in here? Take the square root. And don't forget, oh, that's driving me crazy. Don't forget, don't forget, I'm not sure you got to remember, when you take the square root, to put a plus or minus. Don't forget, you have to put a plus or minus when you take the square root. So anytime you take the square root of something, you got to put a plus or minus. So what I end up with is the square and the square root cancel. I end up with is x plus, excuse me, 6 equals plus or minus the square root of 22. And that last step is solve for x. So we're going to solve for x by just moving this 6 over and putting it in front. So we're going to subtract 6 and subtract 6. So I get x equals negative 6 plus or minus the square root of 22. Now you can always check to make sure you're right. If you have this TI Inspire calculator, the great thing is you can check it. I can say, okay, I think it's negative 6 plus, oops, excuse me, I forgot the plus, negative 6 plus the square root of 22, and I'm going to store that into x. Control var x. Enter. Now these are roots. So when I type it into this equation, or these are solutions, it should be equal to 0. So 3x squared, 3x squared, plus 36x, plus 36x, plus 42. Now, that's zero. What it really is is negative point zero 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 one. It's zero. That's a zero. It's a little bit off because this up here is a little bit rounded, but it's zero. It's right. All right. Now, that seemed really complicated, but it's not. So we're going to go through a few of these, and you'll see you get it. It's not bad, okay? First step, move the constant over. So we end up with is 2x squared plus 8x uh, equals 14. Divide by 2. Divide by 2. Divide by 2. Now, when I do this, I'm going to rewrite it now, but I'm going to put squares because I want to complete the square. So x squared plus 4x plus square equals, oh, by the way, this should be negative. I apologize. Negative 7 plus square. Okay. Now I got to figure out what goes in that square. Now I like to do these steps kind of all at one time. I know when I'm done, I'm going to have a binomial squared. I know it. I know it because that's what I'm creating. I'm creating a perfect square trinomial here. So I know when I factor it, it's going to be a binomial squared, whatever it is. So I like to do these things at the same exact time. So if I take half of this, I get 2, and that goes there. That's what goes there. I square it, so this really goes right here, squared, 4. If it goes there, it goes there. So what is negative 7 plus 4? That's negative 3. Last step, well, not the last step. Next step is to, that's a terrible color, is to take the square root. Because to get rid of a square, you take the square root. And when you take the square root, yep. Put a 
plus or minus? Okay, so I end up with this x plus 2 is equal to plus or minus negative 3. Now I'm almost done, almost done. What I want to do now is subtract 2, subtract 2. I got two things left to do. This is equal to negative 2 plus or minus. I need to simplify the square root of negative 3. Now you might think, oh, you can't simplify it's it's 3. But what is the square root of something that's negative? Remember, this is really equal to square root of negative 1 times 3. And the square root of negative 1 is i. So this is negative 2 plus or minus i square root of 3. And you can check that as well on the TI Inspired. I know you don't think, believe me, we're going to do this one real quick. Well, hold on. We'll do it when we come back. My life's just not complete without Dunkin' Donuts. Oh, my gosh. Sheer genius. Sheer genius. Oh, where was I? Let's go. We're going to... We're gonna plug this sucker in. Now you know I know you'll probably will be believe me, but, 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 but you gotta believe me. So it's negative two plus i squared to three. So negative two plus, and down here we can get the i, i square roots of three. Now I'm oh come on now. Negative two plus went through all that and nothing was happening. I, you guys are just laughing at me at home, square roots of three. Type that sucker. And I just put the plus in. I can put the minus in as well. I'll show you how to do that too. And we'll store that and put that into x. And then our equation was 2x squared, 2x squared plus 8x plus 14. 8x plus 14. Now hopefully this turns out to be 0. 0. Now again, I said I could check both, right? So I can come up here and just do this. Ding, 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 ding. Make this a minus. Choose enter. And then type that same quadratic in. And I check the positive, I check the both negative, they both zeros. So it's a great test to make sure they got the right answer. There's no reason you should ever turn in the wrong answer because you should be able to check your work. All right, we're going to do this by completing the square. First step is move the constant over. So x squared minus 8x. Now I'm not going to have to divide later, so I'm going to put the plus square already here equals negative 17 plus square. I'm going to take uh, this next step. I'm going to take half of the middle. So what's half of negative 8? Oh, it's negative 4. And what's negative 4 squared? Positive 16. Positive 16. So this is equal to negative 1. Next step, take the square root of both sides. When you take the square root, you put a plus or minus. Don't forget that. Don't forget it. So what I end up with is x minus 4 equals plus or minus. What is the square root of negative 1? That's right. It's i. So my answer is x equals 4, because I'm going to add 4. Always put the number in front. So I'm going to get 4 plus or minus i. This is what's called, and actually the directions should say this, this is what's called a plus or minus b i form. When you put the real number first, the a represents the real number, and this represents the imaginary part. Okay? All right, let's just keep going. How many more we got to do? Ah, it's you try. So it's not monkey see, monkey do. It's you try. All right, so half the, half the middle squared is 49. Half the middle. Half the middle is negative 10. Negative 10 squared is 100. Uh-oh, now we got a problem. So I don't really ever want to use completing the square when I don't have an even number in the middle because it causes us to have a little bit of an issue. Half the middle is... 5 over 2. That's what half the middle is. So now if I square it to equal c, c is actually going to be 25 over 4. You can do it. It's just a pain in the neck. All right, here we go. Uh, try these on your own. See how you do. There's only four of them here. See how you do. They're not that bad. And then uh, come back. Hopefully you're paused. No, pause. Pause and try them on your own. Don't watch the monkey. I'm not a trained monkey. I'm just going to sit and drink my coffee. No, I'm not going to do 
Oh, you're back. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let me pick a new color, fresh color. Okay, half the middle. So there's, so I'm just going to say, okay, x squared plus 6x plus square is equal to, bring the 3 over, 3 plus square. Because I'm just going to bring it over. When it goes over, it gets a sign change. Half of that middle, half of this is 3. It goes there. 3 squared is 9. 9 equals 12. Now, this one's going to be a little bit trickier than the last couple we've done. Take the square root, take the square root. When you take the square root, you put a plus or minus. So I get x plus 3 equals plus or minus the square root of 12. I'm going to bring the 3 over. So I get x equals negative 3 plus or minus. But this, we have to simplify. You can't leave it like that. You want it in its simplest form. So you're going to rewrite it as the square root of 4 times 3. What is the square root of 4? Oh, it's 2. So this becomes 2 square roots of 3. All right, we're getting there. We're going to bring the 25 over, so we go x squared minus 2x plus square equals negative 25 plus square. What is half of this? Oh, that's negative 1. Be careful. Half of 2 is negative 1. Negative 1 squared is 1. So I put a 1 in both those. So on the right side, I get negative 24. Now, that one's really tough. So be careful with that one. To get rid of a square, we take the square root. When you take the square root, you put a plus or minus. All right, so you end up with is x minus 1 equals plus or minus the square root of negative 24. Forget the negative. Negative makes huge. Bring the 1 over, so I get x equals, put it in front, positive 1, plus or minus, and yes, we have to simplify the square root of negative 24. So the square root of negative 24 can be rewritten as negative 4 times 6, right? 4 is our perfect square. What is the square root of negative 4? It's 2i. So this becomes 1 plus or minus 2i square roots of 6. We're getting there, kitties. Almost done. Let's bring the constant over. Now, I'm not ready to write this one with boxes yet because I still got to get rid of that stilly 4. So I'm going to divide by 4. Divide by 4, divide by 4. And now I'm going to get x squared minus 10x plus square. That's that c value we're going to add equals 3 plus square. All right. Half the middle goes in here. x minus, what's half of this? 5. 5 squared is 25, so 25 goes on each side, and I get equals 28. Come back up here with a little black. Take the square root of both sides. When you take the square root, you put a plus or minus. Anybody getting tired of hearing me say that? I'm getting tired of myself saying that, so stop yelling at me. Yes, we're going to have some simplifying to do. We get x minus 5 equals plus or minus the square root of 28. We're going to bring the 5 over. It goes in front. It gets a sign change. So it goes x equals positive 5 plus or minus square root of 28. What perfect square goes into 28? Did you get it? There's only one. 4 times 7. And what is the square root of 4? 2. So this becomes 5 plus or minus 2 where it's a 7. All right, last one. Then we start with something a little bit new. Uh, bring the 98 over. I get 2x squared minus 28. Now, I'm not going to write it with squares just yet because I still got to get rid of that leading coefficient. I want to make that 1. So we're going to divide the left side by 2 and the right side by 2. I did divide the right by, side by yeah, Okay. And so I end up with is x squared minus 14 x plus square equals negative 
49. So then I end up with is x, let's see, squared. What's half the middle? Divide by 2, that's minus 7. Negative 7 squared is 49. Oh, I forgot to put my plus square here. 49. So this is equal to 0. That's weird. I'm going to guess this sucker was factorable. Square root of both sides. Square root of both sides. You take the square root, you get plus or minus. But plus or minus 0 is just 0. So I end up with is x minus 7 equals 0 or x equals 7. Let me go back to the original just out of fun, for fun. Let's take out the original. Let's take out a 2. This probably was factorable. x squared minus 14x plus 49. That's a perfect square trinomial. Half of this squared is that. I didn't need to go through all that. That was already was a perfect square trinomial. No worries, mate. No worries. We still got the same answer. All right, there's another way of looking at a quadratic formula that actually makes it really, really, really easy to graph. Like, you don't even need a calculator if you have it in this form. And that's called the vertex form. The vertex form of a quadratic function. And it's just like the absolute value function that we did before, or the square root functions we've done before. We can do transfer, we can see those transformations very easily in this vertex form. So that's one of the things we're going to do is we're going to convert a normal parabola, a normal quadratic from standard form to vertex form. But before we do that, let's talk about these pieces. Remember, when things are on the inside, when they come out, they get an opposite sign. So H and K make up the center or the excuse me the vertex h comma k is the vertex um, where a is this a is the dilation this h is the x value of the so I was just thinking, I can't, you probably can't see that. So this part right here, this is the horizontal shift. Horizontal shift. If it's positive, you're going left. If it's negative, you're going right. This is the vertical shift. Now, this should sound very familiar. We've already done absolute value functions and some other functions. This is a vertical shift. If it's positive, we're going up. If it's negative, we're going down. And the axis of symmetry, if you'll remember correctly, the axis of symmetry is x equals, and it goes through the vertex. Well, what is the x value of the vertex? h. So the axis of symmetry is x equals h, because it has to go in through the x value of the vertex. So let's just take a look and boom, boom, boom. Let's talk about what's going on here. The vertex for this is, remember, when they come out, the signs are opposite. So negative 1, comma, and that just stays the same, negative 5. My axis of symmetry, axis of symmetry is x equals whatever the x value of the vertex is, negative 1. And it's got a reflection in the x-axis, so it's going down, and that's because of that negative, and it's got a dilation of 1 half, which just means it's going to be wider. So what transformations, let's talk about all the transformations are on from this to this. So we're going to go right two units. We're going to go up six units. We're going to dilate one-fourth. So it means it's going to be wider. Anything else happen? No, I think that's it. So now if I give this to you, you should be able to tell me what the equation for this is. So I'm going to say it's g of x. 
it's coming down, so it's negative. Now, here's how you tell what the dilation is. Normally on a parabola, for let's say f of x equals x squared, here's the vertex, it goes over one and up one, over one and up one. If it was negative x squared, it would go over one and down one, over one and down one. If it was two x squared, then it would go over one, up two, over one, up two. So to tell what the dilation is or what the A value is, we just look. Oh, we went over one and down one to here. Over one and down one to here. So A value is just one. Now I need to find the vertex. This vertex is negative one comma eight. So the negative is the reflection since we moved to the left one, this is plus one, and we moved up eight, so this is plus eight. And so that's how you create the equation from the graph. So all we're gonna do is figure out the vertex and the axis of symmetry. So the vertex is two, three, that's the vertex. Axis of symmetry is x equals two. The vertex is negative 7, negative 11, and the axis of symmetry is x equals negative 7. And finally here, the vertex is positive 90, negative 15, and the axis of symmetry is x equals 90. So describe the transformations that's performed on the parent function to obtain this one. So the transformation, we moved left 2, up 1, reflection in x-axis, in x-axis, and a dilation of 1 fourth. On this one, we're going to go left one, down three, no reflection, but we have a dilation of two. an odd one. I can take out a 17. You may not have seen it, but I can take out a 17. So it's 17 and it's Well, I could take out the 17, but really that's not what's happening. It's not moving left or right because there are no parentheses. This is like having 17 times x plus 0 squared plus 85. These are the same thing. So really, all it is is a dilation of 17. So it's going to be really, really skinny and up 85. All right, let's see if we can write these equations. First things first, let's find this vertex. The vertex is negative 1, 2, 3. Negative 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Negative 3, 5. So I know it's going to be f of x equals, I move to the right or left 3, so it's x plus 3 squared and squared and up 5. Now, I also want to check to see if there's a dilation. So I check. I go, okay, we move to the, we move to the right 1 and up one to get to the next point. And the next one should be right two and up four. That means it doesn't have a dilation. It just is what it is. That's it right there. Done. Let's talk about this one. We've got a lot going on this one. So g of x is equal to, I know it's negative. Let's find this vertex. It's two comma one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Two comma seven. So I'm gonna put that in right now. So it's x, I move to the right 2, so it's minus 2 squared, and then up 
seven. But I gotta see if it's got a dilation. In this case, I move to the right one, left one, down one, right one, down one. So no dilation, but I do have a negative here. All right, and I believe that is that. That's all she wrote. All righty, kids, that's done. That is number, what are we at now? Is this a 3.7? Day seven. Oh my gosh, so much fun. I hope you had a good time today. I did. Bye.